This is a piece of morganite that has come out of jewelry. I selected this piece to recut as it isn't suitable to go back into jewelry with the amount of wear on it. Recutting stones like this one is something that I do quite often. I approach gem cutting more as a form of art. I like transforming stones from their raw or beat up state to something that is beautiful and more unique than the average gemstones you see. I often use designs that I like from online that the authors have made available for anyone to use for free. For this stone, the cut that I am using is called Split Mains Brilliant, which is a design by Norman Still. I chose this cut because it is the same shape and similar in size to the previous cut on the stone that I am cutting. I picked uh, the girdle facets that are directly opposite of each other to kind of cut in a little bit first just to do the, check the size of the stone I'm cutting. Uh, to begin with, this original piece was a little under 10 millimeters and right now it's really close to 9 and so I'm going to cut it right down and keep it right at about 9 millimeters. So Morganite is the pink, the peachy color variety of burl. Uh, gets its color from traces of manganese impurities within the crystal. It is related to emeralds and aquamarines, which are a couple of other variations within the burl family. Morganite has a hardness of 7.5 to 8 on the most hardness scale, which makes it a suitable stone for jewelry. So for final polish of this stone, I'll be using a Greenway lap. It's basically a chrome oxide embedded lap. And I maintain a relatively even amount of pressure through all the stages of cutting of a stone. Uh, you never want to put too much pressure because a lot of pressure puts a lot of tension on the stone and can cause it to pop off, uh, break the bond of the super glue, which you don't ever want to have happen while cutting a stone. On this stone I followed my regular sequence for cutting the stone. I cut in all the main facets with a 600 grit lap followed by 3000 grit on a tin lap for the pre-polish of the stone. And for polishing morganite, I used a Greenway polishing lap for doing the nice final polish. Yeah, so with the crown depth that I have to work with, I will have to bring the angles in for the crown slightly compared to the diagram to get it to fit the stone. Now my machine's starting to get a little dirty with some overspray little pieces of stone on it so I'm just going to give it a quick wipe down before I get started. All right, that looks a lot better. Let's take it out of the transfer block. Let's heat it off. So I went in and I measured the depth I have to work with on the crown and I adjusted my angles for the crown facets accordingly which I took them down about 10% from the original angles so they will work with the depth that I have to work with this crown to get them to fit the stone. Morganite cuts and polishes fairly quickly and relatively easily as far as stone cutting goes so it won't take very long at all to get the stone finished and have the finished piece. The cutting and polishing of the crown side of this stone went smoothly all the way up until I got to cutting in the table. There was a deep scratch that I thought would cut out pretty easily in the stone, but as I cut in my table where I wanted it to be, the scratch was still there. And the scratch was big and deep enough that it's not something I would want to leave in the stone because it would be noticeable and not look very good. So I kept cutting the stone in with the pre-polish thinking it would come out pretty quick, but the table was very overcut by the time I was finally able to get the scratch to come out. It ran that deep. Once the scratch was finally out, I went ahead and polished the table as normal. Cutting and polishing it in, I cut it way deeper than I want it to be at almost completely cutting out the star facets. So instead of being done with the stone, I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna fix that up, and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna change the angle down slightly on the second and third tier of the crown facets to get them cut back in where I want them 
before I say I'm done with this stone. So now after having to fix that, now we're done. It's very much worth it to go in and do what I did, get rid of the scratch, uh, just redo some of the facets, whatever's needed to get the stone to look perfect. So you don't want to go through all that work that, of fasting the stone, then leave a nasty scratch in it or something that's going to be obvious. You want it to look better than that. So I got it fixed and it's going to look good. All right, it's had plenty of time to soak, so let's take it out and see what we ended up with. Well, here it is. Its color is about the typical pink from Morganite. And other than the scratch and the table causing some extra work, I really liked cutting the piece. Cutting round stones can go fairly quickly and is one of the easier shapes to cut. And if you happen to be someone learning faceting, Morganite's and Aquamarines are nice materials to work with. They tend to be relatively easy to learn to polish. Um, in the end, I brought the width of this stone in about one millimeter from about 10 millimeters to 8.95 millimeters. The finished piece weighs 2.23 carats, which is about 1.1 carats down from its starting weight. 